Welcome to our tutorial about controls in the VBA environment. We already know some ways of manipulating controls. We just grab, drag, and drop into our form. We can resize them. If I click on the controls, I'm able to draw a region on the form. If I click twice on a control, I can draw a number of regions and place controls in this way. Let's control select some of our controls and delete them. We simply click the delete key on our keyboards. Each control has specific properties as we discussed in our previous lesson. Two of the same control will have the same types of properties. We can assign values to each of these properties. Let's try it out. The first property field we see here is the name field. It's a good habit to assign a name that you'll remember a few months from now when you open this program again. You may think you'll remember, but you definitely won't. It's also a good practice to use standard predetermined prefixes for different types of controls. Here I've got a list of some commonly used prefixes. For example, ListBox uses the prefix LST, Button uses BTN. Prefixes make it much easier to identify your controls in the code window. There's different prefix standards. And these are important to organize and use if you need to collaborate with other programmers and engineers on a project. Even if you're writing some small script for yourself only, using the common prefixes and names will definitely save you time and prevent future confusion. The prefixes I'm showing you here are by no means the only standard for prefixes. In fact, you may find that you need to develop your own prefixes if it becomes convenient and logical for you to do so. All right, your name should look something like this. Label, LBL, my label. Now let's take a look at the caption property. This is text which appears on the label. Let's also set up the border color. We can use the existing palette of system colors. Now even though I've selected black as the color for my window frame, I don't see it here. That's because the border itself is set to invisible. I need to change the value of the border style property first in order to see the border color. Let's enter the height and width of our control. For the width, I need to scroll down. If I want this property to appear under the same category, I would choose the categorized view. Now I see the height, left, top, and width properties under the position category branch. Let's enter a value of zero for the left and top properties. This places our label in the top left corner. Now let's click on the button and click again. This lets me type the caption text right here in the user form. The text that I'm typing appears in the Caption Property field. Control Tip Text is yet another property. The Control Tip Text is the text that appears when you mouse over a control. Let's give this button a proper name. Now if I go to this drop-down menu, we can easily distinguish the button and the label. BTN yes, and LBL my label. If I want to change the properties for more than one control, I simply control select them. Let's modify one of the common properties that all of these controls share. For example, let's choose font. I'm going to use an 11 point bold for demonstration purposes. OK. Some properties of controls have a Boolean value. Now the visible properties are set to true. I can set the visible property for my label as false. This keeps the label visible during design time, but during run time I won't see it. Let's return to design time by closing the running form. Now let's set the visual property to true. Now the label becomes visible during runtime. As we progress through our VBA course, we're going to be learning more about the various controls and their properties. And this concludes our tutorial about VBA controls.